Bruce Kringle here. I'll be joined today by my four business relations specialist colleagues, Ron Klonsnowski, Jolly Jordan, Jilly Weather Simpson, and Mistletoe Mike Hogue. Today's webinar will celebrate the spirit of the season as my colleagues and I lead you on a journey throughout the imaginary town of Snow Ohio to share four gifts to help unwrap the talents of people with disabilities. The last 10 minutes or so of the webinar will be a live Q&A session. So please post your questions in the Q&A box so they are ready for us when we stop. And with that, we hope you enjoy the show. Was the holiday season and all through the land. Visions of profits were being dreamed of and counted by hand. Businesses were out of the red and into the green as employees with disabilities were being hired and truly seen. But how to advance and best collaborate? The tips will unfold for you, more than seven or eight. So sit back and relax, grab some delicious hot cocoa, the business relations specialists are here to help you. Ready, set, go. You've developed some recruitment initiatives and you've hired some people with disabilities. Now what? Uh, according to a study published by Springer, employees with disabilities are more likely to be underemployed versus employees without disabilities, and their wages are lower than average salaries for persons without disabilities too. Disability inclusion is not just about hiring and retaining people with disabilities. It's also about making sure diversity doesn't begin and end with the entry level positions that are initially secured. Employees with disabilities report experiences of subtle discrimination in being excluded from informal gatherings and being ignored in company meetings. People with disabilities are just like anyone else. They have career aspirations and goals. They wanna perform well in their roles. They enjoy new challenges and they wanna get ahead. For employees with disabilities, promotions mean more opportunities to display their unique skills, engage in new experiences and increase income. The Office of Disability Employment Policy conducted research demonstrating the reasons for exclu exclusion from career advancement for employees with disabilities were perceived attitudes of supervisors, coworkers, and the respective customer base, as well as a lack of knowledge of accommodations for that next role on the career ladder. Look, demographics in our country are rapidly shifting and companies desire diverse leaders who reflect the changing marketplace. Since one in four American adults have a disability, do you really wanna miss out on unwrapping the talents of 25% of the population? Businesses that successfully recruit, retain, and promote qualified diverse employees maintain a competitive edge in a global economy. It takes intentional focus and action to make a culture inclusive. Prioritizing those pathways to upward mobility for employees with disabilities as part of your talent strategy will demonstrate your company's commitment to all of your employees. The gift of talent of employees with disabilities and their upward mobility is what you receive when you incorporate the following suggestions associated with collaboration. So off to Snow Ohio to open gift number one. It's Ron Klonsnowski to assist in getting the job done. The gift of talent through collaboration will be revealed. Your company's culture will be enhanced and success it will yield. Thanks, Cruz Kringle. I'm coming to you from my snowy cave high atop Mount Buckeye. The views from up here give me a great perspective on our town of Snow Ohio and how we can help a business score by growing its workforce, perhaps even by times four. Whether you are running a small town business like those in Snow Ohio, or are the CEO of a large company based in Columbus or Cleveland, collaboration with your employees with disabilities can have a tremendous impact on the growth of your organization in multiple ways. You can unwrap staff members' talents and benefit from their unique perspectives, all while impacting your bottom line in a positive manner. So why collaborate with your employees who have disabilities? Greater question would be, why wouldn't you collaborate with them? In the business sense, collaboration is defined as utilizing internal and external resources in order to produce ideas and solutions for your company. For this to be successful, 
the collaboration should be conducted with open and honest communication. In your business, I'm sure you value your staff members who can problem solve. People who think outside of the box to address issues in a unique way can not only come up with solutions, but can also spur ideas from others during brainstorming sessions. Many people with disabilities have had to adapt their whole lives to their disability. This is how they have solved problems in their day-to-day -day lives. So they are design thinkers by nature. According to interactiondesign.org, design thinking seeks to understand users, challenge assumptions, redefine problems, and create innovative solutions. These individuals do not see issues as insurmountable, but as a challenge to overcome. So when your organization has a problem that needs to be tackled, wouldn't it be great to have a team member who's approaching solutions in this manner? If you have an employee with a disability, you probably already do. Do not miss the opportunity to unwrap the talent they may have to use design thinking. As I mentioned earlier, a person with a disability can spawn ideas from others on your team. By adding a person who is used to design thinking, you are bringing in a new point of view. But adding that person's perspective to your team is also going to lead to increased creativity in your workplace. And nothing fuels innovation like creativity. One of the most creative individuals who lived in the US was Thomas Edison, and he believed his deafness was a distinct advantage to sparking his innovations. The interaction between your employees with and without disabilities will create synergy and lead to new concepts and ideas. For many issues that arise, just like other staff members, a person with a disability can be part of the solution and their feedback will likely be influenced by their unique insight and experience as a person living with a disability, something others around the table may not possess. This is how many inventions that benefit people with and without disabilities were birthed, such as the typewriter, which was co-developed by a person who was blind as a means of replacing handwriting as a communication medium. OXO kitchen tools, which are popular amongst consumers with and without disabilities, were developed by a husband and wife team to alleviate her limitations with grip and mobility as a result of developing arthritis. Audiobooks were created by the American Federation of the Blind and now are a benefit for all of us who drive for a living or who have long trips to see our relatives and friends this season. These examples and many others demonstrate how to open another gift, the gift of teamwork. When employees work together and share thoughts and ideas, it helps them develop solid working relationships. They learn from one another. As they work together, camaraderie develops, leading to engagement and productivity. When a team member with a disability is part of this, imagine the impact. Coworkers who may have had initial, initially had preconceived notions of what the person with a disability was capable of may, through time and exposure, find employees with disabilities to be valuable contributors. An example of this would be a deaf person pointing out the need for a flashing light or a buddy system to be implemented for a fire alarm. The coworker without the disability might have never even considered that a deaf person would not hear the alarm and that an alternative way of notification was necessary. This contribution may open their, their eyes to the value of such insight for all workers. The employee with the disability will become more engaged as they gain confidence that their perspective is being heard and valued which can lead to everyone feeling more comfortable contributing. And then morale increases, and that translates into additional productivity. According to Gallup, businesses who, whose employees feel engaged experience 17% more productivity, 41% less absenteeism, and 21% higher profitability versus other companies. Truly a gift worth opening. As in the fire alarm example I mentioned, when you have an employee with a disability on board at your company, you have a resource that can provide your company with a distinct perspective, but that's not limited to a safety issue or for their input on how to best communicate with them. You have customers that have disabilities. You also have potential customers that have disabilities. 
and you have a resource to better serve both. Your employee with a disability can provide you with a unique lens into a customer base, which can impact your product development and services to your clientele. So let's just consider the Snohio Manufacturing Company. They are creating gadgets and gizmos to be sold during the holiday season, but they are missing a large percentage of potential customers because these two items are not accessible to purchasers that have a certain type of disability. What if they had the input of an employee who had that particular disability? An article from Financial Times talked about the gift of talent from Vince Cerf, considered one of the fathers of the internet. Surf is hard of hearing, and in the 1980s, the deaf and hard of hearing community were looking for an alternative to communicating over the phone. Surf led the way, and his efforts led to the creation of the first commercial email service. In this case, it resulted in a completely new creation for all users, and that same innovation can be applied to your existing products and services. Now you've opened the door for more customers. Simply creating a workplace where your employees with disabilities feel comfortable and encouraged and have access to suggest improvements or modifications could lead to the sale of a lot more gadgets and gizmos, so to speak. Hiring people with disabilities has been shown to increase customer loyalty, especially with those who have a personal connection to that specific disability. As Cruz Kringle mentioned, People with disabilities make up 25% of the adult population. Now factor in the family, friends, and colleagues of those individuals. That is a lot of purchasing power. Studies have shown that in general, people pr prefer to patronize companies that hire people with disabilities. When customers have a connection to that disability, it becomes personal and people want to do even more business with that company. So for example, a mother of a child with a developmental disability may shop at the Snow Ohio supermarket and see an employee with Down syndrome stocking or bagging groceries. That experience may enhance her customer loyalty to the store and will keep her coming back. I mentioned earlier how working with a person with a disability can lead to enhanced creativity and innovation for those working directly with them on a task or activity. But let's just consider it in a general sense. Just in time is a cashier at the Snow Ohio Hardware Supercenter, and the store manager, Carol Singer, uses a wheelchair. Although Justin may not always be working side by side with Carol, his perception of people with disabilities may have been changed by his interactions with Carol in the workplace. Hiring people with disabilities increases other team members' exposure to the skills and abilities of coworkers with disabilities and improves the comfort level of working with people who have disabilities. Social belonging is a fundamental human need, hardwired into our DNA. And yet studies show 40% of people say that they feel isolated at work, which can lead to lower organizational commitment and engagement. U.S. businesses spend nearly $8 billion each year on diversity, equity, and inclusion trainings that miss the mark because they neglect our need to feel included. Studies show that feelings of being left out can be prevented by gaining perspective from others, mentoring those in a similar condition, and thinking of strategies for improving the situation. For team leaders and colleagues who want to help others feel included, serving as a fair-minded ally, someone who treats everyone equitably, can offer protection to buffer the exclusionary behaviors of others. So now you have opened the gift of why you should ensure collaboration with your employees who have disabilities. Let's peek into the next gift. Cruz Kringle, can you provide us direction as to the next stop in our effort to help leaders increase their growth through the gift of talent? Absolutely. Now on to Jilly Weather Simpson to unwrap gift number two. She's got even more insight and advice for you on ways to collaborate throughout the whole live long year. It's easier than you think. Have no fear. It's not tough sledding. And with snowflakes yet to come, skate on by with notes from Jilly Weather to increase your sum. Thanks, Cruz Kringle. As the CEO at Alfware Manufacturing, I certainly value collaboration with all my employees. As Ron mentioned, 
collaboration involving our employees with disabilities has yielded many gifts as a company, including unique perspectives, increased morale, and even an expanded understanding of how we can ensure Elfware is accessible for our customers with disabilities. Now I'd like to share some ideas of how you can collaborate with your employees with disabilities. Let me start by sharing a few strategies Elfware has implemented to become the largest manufacturer of Bell Adorned footwear in all of Snow Ohio through our efforts with collaboration between our employees with and without disabilities. If you're not sure of the best way to communicate with your employees who have an obvious or disclosed disability, those employees are your best resource. Consult with them to determine their preferences for communication. This is especially true for a staff member who is deaf or hard of hearing. If they are part of a large team planning a major project, they may prefer a sign language interpreter at team meetings to ensure they do not miss any important details. Should it be a smaller group, they may prefer texting or if they are able, speech or lip reading. Whatever the disability, remember to consult the individual. When setting up a meeting or live training session, to ensure, you, to ensure you receive all the gifts of talent from everyone in attendance. Plan it with attention to accommodations for all of the participants. Here are some best practices to help your staff benefit from the information being shared. For someone who uses an American Sign Language interpreter, schedule the interpreter in advance. And before the meeting starts, Consult with the deaf or hard of hearing employee as to the best placement of the interpreter. So the employee is sure to receive all the information being presented. At Elfware Manufacturing, we, when we have a live training session or meeting with a large group, we use a microphone throughout the entire meeting to help hard of hearing employees who may not be using an interpreter. Also, whenever possible, Elfware manufacturing staff are seated in a circle facing each other. This can help your employees who speech read as they will be able to more clearly see the faces of those who are speaking. If the presenter will be using written materials, visual aids, or a PowerPoint during a live or virtual presentation, you can utilize the accessibility checker for applications such as Microsoft Word and PowerPoint to ensure your materials are accessible to your employees with disabilities. You can increase the size of the print via magnification and provide the information ahead of time in an electronic format to employees who are blind or have low vision. Also be sure to consider how color contrast in written materials may impact a person who is blind or has low vision. When selecting the room for your meeting, make sure it is accessible for your employees who use mobility devices. Aside from ensuring that doorways and aisleways are wide enough, keep in mind that if the meeting is being held on an upper floor and no alternative such as an elevator is available, stairs could lead to an accessibility issue. Also consider the accessibility of other areas your employees might encounter when attending your meeting, such as a parking lot, break room, or a restroom. Keep in mind, you may have employees who have sensory needs. Select a space with ambient lighting and attempt to make it fragrance-free. Staff may also benefit from scheduled breaks and a dedicated quiet space that can be used should they experience sensory overload. Providing an agenda ahead of time can help staff who have mental health disabilities or who may be neurodivergent, which means someone who thinks differently than what the majority of people expect them to, such as someone with autism. In some cases, these individuals may need additional time to process information. So having an agenda can give them time to prepare and reduce their stress. 
also consider providing these staff members with an alternative way to provide responses and suggestions, as opposed to only being able to respond verbally do, during a meeting. Being able to submit questions and ideas through an email or a chat can have a great impact on someone who wishes to contribute, but has a disability such as anxiety. Don't miss out on the potential gift of great suggestions. To truly unwrap the benefits of collaboration with all your employees, including those with disabilities, it is vital you not only ask for, but listen carefully to their input. Make sure to leave ample time during meetings to ask for your staff's ideas, concerns, and suggestions. Then listen carefully to their responses. Again, a gentle reminder to offer the opportunity for your staff to provide their input in a variety of communication methods. If you are asking for solutions in a meeting discussion, open it up to email comments afterwards as well. Likewise, if you're asking for responses via email, allow employees to voice their responses too. Be flexible and mindful to obtain input from all that want to share. Everybody deserves to have a voice and having a person with a disability at the table when key discussions are being held is very important. But it's also important to not assume that one person with a disability is a spokesperson for all individuals with disabilities. Try to engage all your staff with disabilities by, by ensuring everyone has an opportunity to contribute to, their, to your success. Having that person with a disability at the table is important, but like many other employees, they may yearn for a leadership role on a team, enabling them to demonstrate their talents. Provide them an opportunity to present team ideas and innovations to other employees. This can enhance their confidence and lead to more contributions and displays of leadership down the road. If your business has specialized leadership initiatives for underrepresented groups of people, make sure that employees with disabilities have a similar initiative to aid in their advancement too. One of the best ideas that we enacted at Elfware Manufacturing to continue our efforts to, to collaborate with our employees with disabilities is the creation of a disability employee resource group. For those of you who may not be familiar with employee resource or affinity groups, they are voluntary led, I'm sorry, voluntary led, voluntary employee led groups that work to create a diverse, inclusive workplace in alliance with the organizations where they work. They are usually led by employees who share a specific characteristic, such as lifestyle, gender, and ethnicity. A disability employee resource group can generate a number of benefits to those involved and ultimately for the employer. Disability employee resource groups can provide a platform for idea sharing and disability related projects to be identified and executed. The group should include not only employees with disabilities, but also someone with decision making authority and employees without disabilities. And keep in mind, don't just limit the employees with disabilities to participating in the Disability Employee Resource Group. They can make great contributions to other employee resource groups as well. Perhaps they have an affiliation to one of the other groups, or they may just want to support those that have that connection. There are many opportunities within your organization to address innovation challenges through the unique perspective of an employee with a disability. Think of all the opportunities you have within your organization to offer those staff, staff members a chance to participate in leading your company. Work groups, safety committees, employee morale committees, committees to work on new products and services, 
or evaluating processes like a Kaizen or Lean project. Who knows what innovations may result? For example, Kiyoko Asakawa lost her vision as a teenager in a swimming accident. Having to have her textbooks read to her and a lack of accessibility and technology led to frustration and she set on a course to make technology more accessible. Following a computer programming class, IBM hired her to do research and later to develop, to develop an English to Braille translation system. While working for IBM, she developed a word processor for Braille documents, as well as a text-to-speech plugin for the Netscape web browser. This resulted in her being inducted into the U.S. National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2019. At L4 Manufacturing, we collect food like snow peas and iceberg lettuce to donate during the holidays. It's wonderful for companies to get involved with community service activities and fundraisers like charity walks and volunteering for homeless shelters. Again, this is another opportunity to include your employees with disabilities in collaboration and provide them the chance to share their gifts of talent. Remember to think about what their involvement would look like and ensure that community service activity will be inclusive. Lastly, remember to also keep your team celebrations and team building activities accessible to your employees with disabilities. Whether it's a retirement party, an awards celebration, a team building exercise, or a Cruise Kringle's favorite, a holiday party, everyone wants to be able to participate. And on that note, Cruz Kringle, where is the next opportunity to help employers celebrate those now open gifts of talent? Well, Jill, let's visit Mistletoe Mike Hogue at Snowhio's favorite employer tool store. He sells vocational maps, career ladders, and much, much more. For job success and upward <clears throat> mobility is our aim. So employees with disabilities may advance in the game. Now on to gift number three, where Mistletoe Mike will provide guidance that's fire and we hope you will like. Mistletoe Mike Hoke here. Good morning, Cruz Kringle. I've heard you've had a very interesting trip through the town of Snow Ohio so far. Not to frost your cupcakes, but I heard Ron Klon Snowski shared some sunny and bright reasons why collaboration opportunities in the workplace are important to people with disabilities. And Jilly Weather Simpson gave you the crisp and clear steps on how to create collaborative opportunities at work. Well, I'm really glad you stopped by my hardware store so we can tool around and hammer out some other important elements of unwrapping the gift of talent from your employees with disabilities, helping your employees with career pathways. Before we build that corporate ladder, let's take a look at why upward mobility is so important. Not to be confused with succession planning, a career pathway is personalized to the employee. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, or SHRM, a career development path provides employees with an ongoing mechanism to enhance their skills and knowledge that can lead to mastery of their current jobs, position them for promotion, and potential transfers to new or different positions. That's a pretty important why, don't you think? These pathways can guide your employees' efforts, increase their productivity, and improve their confidence. Without a career pathway, the opposite may be the result. An employee can feel lost or isolated. Career pathing can be a strategic talent recruitment and retention tool. Career pathways and employee development are not one in the same. Employee development may be a component of a career path, 
as it focuses on skills and training to improve, improve an employee's value to the organization, but it's not the entire career path. Without intentional career pathing, employees may suffer from inconsistent engagement from and with their employees. According to Talent Guard, companies with high employee engagement have 41% less absenteeism, 24% less or lower turnover, and are 21% more profitable. And we know lower turnover means less cost and time spent recruiting. Ignoring this is a missed opportunity. With these financial metrics in mind, companies are beginning to understand the relevance of career pathways. It requires commitment, but the rate of return brings immeasurable value to the employer. A reduction in turnover with increased employee productivity and engagement, well, that's a winning scenario for all. There are really three main reasons why forward-thinking companies are investing the time and effort to develop career pathways for employees across their company. We've already touched on the first a little bit, employee retention. Millennials are now the largest generation in the workforce, and they have a strong interest in companies that intentionally construct and emphasize positive employee experiences. One common reason employees leave a company is a lack of training and growth opportunities. Developing a career pathway addresses this by outlining a plan for training growth and development within an organization. Second, better employee engagement is another reason for developing career pathways. Poor employee engagement results in unhappy workers who become dissatisfied in their work because they don't feel the company is investing in them. They disconnect from coworkers and eventually move on or worse, they stay, but are disengaged. Providing career pathways can help an employee see and achieve their career goals. In addition, they're less likely to leave, something which is extremely important in today's great resignation environment. Finally, an increase in employee productivity is a strong motivator for employers. A career pathway is a strategic tool to help get the employee more excited to come to work and hone their current skills or learn new ones. Without it, an employee's quality of work may suffer. It can become stagnant, resulting in diminished productivity. Well, I've covered the main reasons why an employer should develop career pathways, but I've run out of time. I gotta go deliver a special meal to my Snow Ohio neighbor, Jolly Jordan. But one last thing before I go, many of these suggestions we're providing today would be beneficial for all employees. And you may be doing some of these. To be truly inclusive, remember to include employees with disabilities. I hope you found some of these items in my toolbox helpful and encourage you to drill down on some of them. <gasps> I gotta go, Cruz Kringle, off to nail my meal delivery. Now on to visit with Jolly Jordan to receive gift number four. She's sure to welcome us with talents and tips and tasty tidbits galore. Up to the rooftops with mobility she flies, Glad tidings for your business she brings, no matter what size. Good cheer and cash registers jingling. Throughout 22, with employees with disabilities, you'll be mingling. Well, hi, Cruz Kringle. It's Jolly Jordan at my workshop in Snow, Ohio. I heard you recently spoke with a buddy of mine. Mistletoe Mike is one of a kind. He prepared and dropped off a meal on which I can dine. 
He brought me pistachio pudding and a full winter's feast, but that's something I just cannot stand in the least. While his food is no good, Mike did share some ideas that matter. He talked about why it's important to climb the corporate ladder. Employees with disabilities are looking for career agility, and companies may be asking about upward mobility. On this matter, I have something to say. I've got a few strategies to help develop career pathways. Evidence shows when you provide employees with disabilities the right tools and supports, benefits to companies will not fall short. I think it's time to open the gift and unwrap that talent and then learn of employer strategies that seem rather valiant. Well, let's begin with a few basic concepts. As we said before, employees with disabilities have their own aspirations and career goals. One step an employer can take is to ensure employees are aware of and have the chance to apply for career and learning development opportunities at all levels. I'm aware of an employer in Ohio who offers learning sessions with senior leaders. The learning sessions are an opportunity for the company's employees who are early in their careers, including employees with disabilities, to have a seat at the table to offer suggestions. The sessions take on a top-down and a bottom-up approach to the topics discussed during these meetings. What a great way for this company's pipeline of leadership talent to interact with and learn from the organization's current leaders. It also supplies the leadership members with a regular rhythm to routinely encounter firsthand the level of talent they have on deck. Establishing career development plans for all employees, including employees with disabilities, is a great way to offer a multi-pronged approach to extending career pathways. These plans can include goal setting, team building, networking, performance evaluations, leadership opportunities, supervisor or management development, professional skills training, and mentoring. So let's talk about mentoring for a moment. Simply put, mentoring develops your next generation of leaders. It builds human capital and prepares employees for advancement by strengthening their skills and confidence. When you ensure these opportunities are inclusive of all employees, including employees with disabilities, you create a valuable learning opportunity for both the mentor and the mentee. When a mentor is paired with an employee with a disability, they may gain a greater awareness and understanding of disability because they can routinely see up close the unique talent, skills, and problem-solving abilities of the employee. The employee with a disability can benefit from a mentor who has more experience to provide guidance, support, and advocacy in your organization. Something else employees with disabilities can struggle with is getting exposure to learning new skills and the opportunity to showcase their abilities. To unwrap this talent, the employer could consider a few strategies to provide more visibility to an employee with a disability. Offering career lattice opportunities is a great place to start. Career lattice escalates the employee's opportunity to move laterally within the company to glean new experiences and skills. This expansion of skills can help to better position the employee for advancement opportunities. Let me share an example with you from another Ohio employer. There was an employee who started out in a role in outside sales. The employee demonstrated strong business development, customer service, and communication skills, and performed well in an intense environment. This same employee made a lateral move to a position in the company working with a completely different subset of clients, and it had nothing to do with outside sales. In the new role, the employee honed their organizational and project management skills, and as a result, was promoted to supervisor. As a supervisor, the employee further developed another set of skills in leadership, conflict resolution, and decision making. This same employee was recently promoted to division manager. That initial lateral move opened many doors on the employee's career pathway and created opportunities for upward mobility because they had the chance to develop new skills, gain exposure to other colleagues and leaders, and showcase their talents. Job rotations are another avenue companies can use to familiarize employees with disabilities with the entire business operations and help the employee to recognize the transferable skills that can be a benefit in other positions. 
Another career development tool that produces positive outcomes is job enrichment opportunities. This is where the employee can take on more responsibilities and new assignments to gain more skills and refine their strengths. We know when you place employees with disabilities in roles that maximize their skills, they can advance into leadership roles. Temporary appointments or work assignments are great tools to introduce qualified employees with disabilities to new roles and highlight their skills and abilities to perform well. We even use temporary work assignments at OOD, and quite often it goes so well it turns into a permanent promotion. Some organizations have explored the development of bridge or upward mobility positions to provide career pathways. If that is the case for your organization, please remember to include your employees with disabilities in these initiatives as well. Well, so far we've talked about ideas for fostering upward mobility of really all employees, including employees with disabilities that can be considered at an organizational level. But there are some things that direct supervisors can do to support the growth and development of their employees with disabilities. A great idea I've seen implemented by some employers is scheduled career chats. These chats go beyond the annual performance evaluation. They are conversations about the employee's career development and progression with their direct supervisor or an identified mentor. Part of this discussion with the supervisor can include the evaluation of the employee's talents, interests, and skills in relation to required and desired qualifications of available jobs within the organization. During these conversations, I would caution the supervisors to be careful not to assume the disability will be a barrier. You know, Cruz Kringle, all this talk today about unwrapping the gift of talent particularly the talent of employees with disabilities, reminds me of a quote from Laura Sherbin, co-president of the Center for Talent Innovation. Laura says, diversity without inclusion is a story of missed opportunities, of employees so used to being overlooked that they no longer share ideas and insights. But diversity with inclusion provides a potent mix of talent retention and engagement. Imagine the possibilities when your company's talent is engaged and invested in the organization. This is not just about simply hiring and retaining people with disabilities. It is also about, about creating a culture that embraces unique perspectives, ideas, and people. The employee with a disability contributes to this culture, but so do their coworkers, supervisors, and leaders of the organization. And that brings me to my last point. We know the greatest barrier to employment for people with disabilities is not the disability itself. The greatest barrier to employment and career growth is the attitudes and misperceptions held by others. To really propel a plan in motion to unwrap the talent of employees with disabilities, an organization should have a dedicated plan for continuous training and education for managers, supervisors, and C-suite executives on the resources for managing, mentoring, and promoting employees with disabilities and disability access workshops like what we're doing today. Encourage senior level managers to serve as champions on issues involving accessibility and employment of people with disabilities. If you'll indulge me, I'd like to share one more story with you. A few years ago, I had the privilege of sitting in on an employee resource group meeting at a regional retail chain. It was during this meeting that one of the employees brought up the issue of printed language on the retailer's handicap parking signs to the group. The employee explained the term handicap parking was outdated and accessible parking is a more inclusive and respectful way to designate parking spaces for customers with disabilities. The group discussed the benefits of updating their signage to include the more respectful language and the message this would relay to their customers and their employees. Well, a vice president in the organization was part of this ERG. This vice president acted on behalf of the ERG as a champion for this idea, and the executive leadership agreed to change the signage throughout their retail locations in the Midwest. The employees brought the idea to the table and someone in a position with the power and influence had the ability to make the positive change. I've shared a lot of ideas with you today, ideas to help build strong career pathways. With some focused thoughts and intentional planning to unwrap the talent, the efforts you make will serve as a career pathways propellant. If 
special to Jingle. Now I'm turning it back over to you, Cruz Kringle. Now with presents opened and icicles and hearts that have been thawed, we hope you enjoyed our lyrical and poetic presentation, no matter how flawed. The multiple gifts and talents of employees with disabilities have been revealed. Collaboration and career advancement are no longer perplexing or concealed. So untie those ribbons and bows, fire up a Yule log, and no longer shed a tear. As we of OOD's business relations team wish those you hold dear a happy holiday season and a prosperous, happy, and healthy new year. It takes focus and action to make a culture inclusive and prior prioritizing the pathways to upward mobility of employees with disabilities as part of your talent strategy will demonstrate your company's commitment to its employees. Many of the suggestions we're providing would be beneficial to all employees, and you may already be doing some of these. We're just asking you to also include employees with disabilities. We also understand that implementing these ideas may be dependent on the size of your organization. Remember, OOD is here to help. And with that, let's take a break to see what questions have come in. First question is, can you give some examples of what might come out of a disability employee resource group? Jilly Weather Simpson, can you handle that one for me? Sure. Um, so all of those could look different, um, but one example I can think of is an organization with a disability ERG that started with a survey of their members to determine um, what their focus would be. And so they discovered that they had a desire to um, raise awareness within their organization um, about different types of disabilities. And so one of the things they did was um, invite OOD um, to come in and do training with their with their employees on disability etiquette. Um, and they also invited people with disabilities to come in and share their stories with their employees, um, allowed their employees to ask questions. And, and ultimately, um, what they what I think they would say they found was that it increased um, empathy amongst their staff members for people with disabilities, not only with their their um, amongst their employees, but also it impacted their communications and inter interactions with their customers as well. So just one example. Thanks, Jill. Appreciate that. Uh, another question actually came in from several of our attendees, um, and that is, is this webinar uh, being recorded? And the answer is yes, uh, the webinar is being recorded. So you'll receive a link um, to the recording once the transcript is complete. Um, the recording can also be accessed on our website, the OOD website, uh, www.ood.ohio.gov. Um, and that'll be under our information for employers tab. Um, once you go there, then it's going to be under our on demand webinars section. So thank you for that question. Uh, another one here. Um, what if we have an employee who has a disability um, and we want to consider them for a promotion? Um, but we're not really sure how they're going to do some of the job duties at that next level. Um, Jolly Jordan, can you help me out with that one? Sure, Cruz Kringle, I'd be happy to. First, let me remind you to not assume that the disability will be a barrier to the promotion. Um, and as we said before, if you have questions about how a person could perform job duties at the next level, your best resource is going to be that person with a disability. So have a conversation with them and talk that through. I actually had this situation happen with uh, one of my employer partners. They reached out to me. They had an employee who was in a position doing very well. The employee was hard of hearing. 
they wanted to promote this employee, but the one of the, the skills required at the next level was strong communication skills. And so they had a question about how that would happen. So first I advised the employer partner to have a conversation with the employee. But then secondly, I recommended that they allow this employee to shadow a current employee who is successfully performing that same job function today and let that employee see firsthand what the communication challenges and needs would be in that position um, and then have that conversation. And so the employer allowed the employee to do that and they were able to have a more in-depth conversation because the employee got to see what the needs and communication challenges were going to be in that position and could talk that through with their employer and it resulted in the employee being promoted. I was happy to hear when the employer got back to me and let me know they decided to move forward with that. So that's just an example of, um, of how that can play out when you want to promote an employee with a disability. Thanks so much. Um, OK, it, so it says um, you all spoke about um, how an employee with a disability might help to improve morale um, at an employer's site. So um, can you provide an actual example of an individual with a disability who helped to improve that morale at their employer? Uh, how about uh, Ron on high on that mountain? Ron Klonsnowski, can you help me out with that one? Perfect. Actually, we uh, actually just met with an employer when this exact situation happened. <clears throat> it's a small company uh, based in Warren in Trumbull County. Uh, they do like uniform and uh, mat and uh, linen cleanings for companies. Uh, they actually hired an individual with Down syndrome. And when I met the, the owner, he, he couldn't stop talking about it. He said she was, it brought so much excitement and energy and really a desire to work that it was motivating the other employees. And, you know, I thought I'm with OOD, maybe, you know, maybe just being nice. Uh, but we walked out on the floor to do a tour and her direct supervisor came up and was introduced to me and he said, she is our superstar. Everybody loves her. She's changed our attitude, you know, it, to the point where the company is looking to hire people with disabilities because she was such a success story. So uh, yeah, it was definitely a win-win in that situation for both the company and the individual. Perfect. Um, we hear that a lot and we always love to hear those great success stories for that. Uh, thanks, Ron. Uh, another question. Is OOD a staffing agency? Uh, mistletoe Mike, come on out of the blizzard and help us with that one. <laughs> sure, Chris Kringle. Uh, OOD is not a staffing agency. Uh, we are a, a governmental agency and we do offer similar supports to employers in recruiting and hiring uh, candidates but they're all for permanent placements with your company. We never charge our employers for any of the services we deliver. Uh, so these are your, your tax dollars at work. Uh, and we really work closely with the employer to try to make sure we're making the best possible match of a candidate for the positions that you're looking to fill within your company. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Mike. All right. Searching, searching. I think we've hit all our questions. Um, so thank you for those great questions and uh, thank you so much for joining us.